John Swanson here in Manchester by the sea with my very favorite Aunt Connie Brown. She's everybody's favorite aunt here in Manchester. And we're here to pay a special tribute to my aunt um, because she's having a big birthday coming up. And we're really excited about that. We want to celebrate together with you, Aunt Connie. So congratulations because she's turning, everyone thinks she's turning 70, but you're turning 90. Yes. That's pretty the exciting. Big know. That's pretty exciting. It is. It is. I mean, how you've been in you you were brought up in this little town of Manchester by the sea right. with your you're one of 10 kids. Yes, six boys and four girls. Right. And you are I was the second oldest. Second oldest, one of 10, and of course most known because of your the family our market, Brown's Market. Exactly. And uh, how old were you when you started working in the family uh, market? My I used to hang around the store when I was 10 years old. And my father realized that I was in tune to what's going on in the business, and it ended up being my life's work. Yeah. And we ended up having three stores because there's 10 children, and he wanted to keep us out of trouble. One was at 9 Beach Street, the other was 3 Lincoln Street, and the other was a corner of um, Hill and Dolson Street, Beverly. I can't imagine Connie Brown ever getting in trouble. You no. are known for doing all good deeds all the time, and I don't know how she does it, because if anyone knows my Aunt Connie, if she's not volunteering once a week, still at the Manchester Memorial School, yes. or going to church on Sunday, singing in the choir, yes. or driving around town, hitting the post office, mailing at least a thousand letters a week to <laughs> all of you out there. So where do, where do you get all your energy from? Where does this come well, from? Well, from day one, I've always had a birthday and anniversary calendar, which I still use to this day. And now it's getting very complex because there's too many birthdays on the same date. So uh, for Christmas this past year, uh, Colleen Brown, my uh, Chris's wife, gave me uh, separate uh, calendars, one for my anniversary, one my birthdays, and so now I'll be able to transfer those all and update it. But I got thinking about it the other day. I'm 90. How long will I be able to do this? Well, we know you're going to be here for at least till you're 100. <laughs> so plan on uh, buying at least a couple more thousand <laughs> stamps the next year. Um, I'd love to go down memory lane a little bit with you. And so you've seen a lot. And you've done yeah. a lot. Yes, and, I have. Uh, yep. If you go back to the times when you were a young girl, just yes. maybe things I used that, to love the hair around the store. And it, when I was younger, my dad had a soda fountain. And I always wanted to be a soda jerk, but that never came to be. He ended up taking it out. And um, I also, he allowed me to take swimming lessons, but when I became of age to take the junior life-saving uh, exam, he needed me more in the store, so I never ever reached that plateau. But I did finish uh, school in Manchester, uh, Story High School, in 1940. Uh, we had three schools, in Man three different schools in Manchester at that time. The Price School, the Preschool, and, and Story High School, but that has all changed. And now, because I volunteer the Manchester school system, we have a lot of new people in town. And um, I do not know many of the children. I'm beginning uh, to get to know a lot of them. You still go once a week to the school, so you've seen a lot of, what do you see, how do you see di the difference in education from when you were a young girl, you, you've seen a lot, I mean obviously the technology in the classroom, and I want to add Maya Connie now has an email address, and she has a computer, so if you want to email her. Well, <laughs> but I've seen I, a lot of changes. I've gone into the technology just yet because I'm trying to uh, sort out the thousands of pictures that I've taken over a period of time and pass them out to everybody. But um, uh, the difference I notice is the children today are far more advanced than we were, far more advanced. They read earlier and um, um, their grammar and even when they write and so forth, yeah. Uh, but I noticed you know, they all print. They don't read script at all. You enjoyed yeah. going to school, though? I enjoyed it very much. So what was it like with 10 kids growing up, and uh, all of you were at different schools? Did you study together? How did that all work? Well, um, for one thing, the girls used to get up early uh, because we already had one bathroom. And consequently, if you wanted to be not late for school, you had to be like the first one to get <laughs> washed up. So it was, it, it was a, a hassle, but we all made it. And luckily, we could walk to school. You know, that, that was a, a big plus. And my mom used to just have the table set. The cereal was there. And my father, uh, at that point in time, wasn't full, fully uh, with grocery stores. But he used to, we loved shredded wheat for some reason. He used to buy them at the first dance so twin bo 12 boxes at a time, because we always had a lot of cereal on hand. Of course. <laughs> Even though you grew up during the Depression, obviously, you didn't go hungry if you were brown because it was Brown's Market. Yeah. But what was it like going through those times with, you know, your parents, everybody working in the family? 
we did we knew that there was a financial crisis uh, but we had each other, and we had family. We were close to all our relatives. Uh, name days, uh, in those days, was very predominant amongst the Greek people. I can remember we were young. Uh, they used to rent a hall down on Main Street in Gloucester, and my father used to pile us all in the truck, and we'd all go down, and uh, that's how we learned how to Greek dance, too. I know you're very proud of your Greek, the Greek culture. Well, I'm proud of it. We grew up, Absolutely. you know, learning how to yeah. Greek dance right here at uh, where stand we're at your house that you've been in for, 14 Tappan Street, for a long time. This is where the... 25 cousins, we all used to come and still come and they had a lot, lot of, of birthday parties memories. together, yes. That, that, that to me was very important. But you didn't have birthdays growing up. It wasn't a Greek custom, right? You no, had the name days no. instead of the birthday. But I, out of the 10 children, I was the fortunate one to have a birthday party because my birthday was celebrated on September 4th. And until I went to apply for a job, and the uh, in, in Salem and uh, the uh, interviewer would, didn't believe that I was uh, uh, 17 years old, so he told me how to have to come back with a birth certificate. So the next day, I went to the town hall and got my birth certificate, and it said September 18th. So I came crying from the town hall to the, <laughs> my father's store, and he said, "What did you do? Lose a friend?" I said, "No." I said, "I've been celebrating September 4th for 17 years, and this says September 18." And my father, in polite kind voice, said, "I think you were born September 11th." So I cried all the harder. Well, you get you get three birthdays in. September. We'll celebrate the 4th, the 11th, and the 18th. Well, because I was born September 4th, and school was getting uh, around the corner, um, I always got a birthday party. I was very lucky. But my mother had three babies in December, and they weren't as fortunate to have the parties that I had. <laughs> So now that you're having your big 90th birthday, I know you don't want to talk about it too much because you've got so much energy. You were like the new 70, as they say. <laughs> um, but what do you attribute to this, this sort of, you've always had this sort of healthy, happy attitude. Where does that come from? Well, I, uh, it gives me pleasure. I, I, I think that's primarily it. I, I, I love meeting people. Uh, I bonded with so many people in my lifetime. And I still correspond with a lot of Manchester people that moved from Manchester. They've touched my life. And how have you seen Manchester change? I mean, here you've lived here your whole life. Absolutely. You, you know, it's yeah. still sort of the same, but... Yeah. Our, my generation started to slip away. And so when you want to know something about your background, uh, that person is gone that would know the history of it. So I'm very, very lucky uh, because when we did the 350th uh, celebration, I took a year off uh, to work on that committee, and we got to know a lot of things about our town and they published a lovely book and different ethnic groups were featured in that book yeah. and when you bring that you're volunteering on that one committee you volunteer on a million committees ever since i've known you you know you've always had your hands in a lot of different things well i volunteered for 17 years to go with the manchester fifth graders to camp well the first year we went to camp punk pong and that was anastasia was the first brown to go and um they needed volunteers, and they, she wanted her parents to be volunteers, but they couldn't because they had the other children. So she trampled over to our house and, and brought the proposition to Jenny and I, but Jenny would not go for camp, and yet she was game for everything else, which surprised me. So the next thing I know, I was gifted my sleeping bag, my compass, my binoculars, you name it. <laughs> so you went to Camp Chewankee for, for many, 17 years. For 17 yep. years, you were saying, I know I was lucky. I didn't, you weren't in charge of my cabin, but you certainly were in charge of all the candy. They said, you can't bring candy to Camp Chewankee. And I have to tell you this, because all of a sudden I had like 20 new friends the week of Camp Chewankee, and someone said, they're only hanging out with you because your Aunt Connie here and they want the candy. <laughs> I used to bring, because uh, I, I noticed the first year that everybody's not a good eater. So I knew enough to bring juices, um, a fruit, uh, raisins, a healthy type thing, definitely peanut butter and jelly and crackers. So when I noticed a child that was eating, wasn't eating their lunch properly, I'd always say, please come to my cabin. I used to be a crow's nest most of the years. Right, that was a good one. And um, But when you went to Camp Shawanke, I have to add one thing that you were incredible at was ornithology. Oh, yes. Bird watching, you always out there, you were in charge of a lot of bird watching. Do you still have to do that? I still have my bird book and I pull it out every now and then because I still don't know all my birds. Right, I know. But when I visited Doris Brown, my sister in law, our sister in law recently, uh, she had a, a 
cardinals, you name it, robins, I, different colored birds. I don't get downtown here, so they must all go up to her house. Well, I know that you enjoy board work. Are there other hobbies out there besides all the mailing letters to everybody? And what other some other hobbies you love through life? I was a coin collector. And when, That's uh, yes, and I had so much money, I had to put it in a safe. Uh, we had a safe in our cellar at our store. And when my, uh, my godchild, Charles Brown, who's also my nephew, um, I gave him my whole coin collection and it filled a carriage, believe wow. it or not. Yeah, wow. it was um, uh, silver certificates, $2 bills, uh, silver dollars, you name it. They were boxed. And I used to buy the mints, the mint money, when it was issued every year. So when he, I gave it to him as a gift, he called me up and wanted to know, do you want me to evaluate what's here, let you know? I said, no, don't tell me, because I'll probably jump in the match to hide if I know what I gave you. <laughs> well, you, everyone knows you. You give, 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 and you don't even like to receive, which is amazing about you. Well, they you say just... it's better to give than to receive. Right. And yeah. that, was that taught by your parents, do you think, that whole notion my, of just giving back? My father was most generous, most generous. As a matter of fact, after he passed away, I can't begin to tell how many people told me the nice things that he had done. And he always had a habit of uh, a parent that would bring a new child, he'd always give them. In those days, we had large silver dollars, and, and right. they still had their silver dollar. Of course, your father, Peter Brown, coming over from Greece, mm -hmm. and basically with a push cart full of vegetables, was able to have the, the first store and the yeah. second store. Yeah. And the, talk about that whole being part of that and watching just sort of your father's vision and how he just did what he did in the town of Manchester. Well, when he first came to this country, he, he he and his cousin, Vuderitzer, and his brother had where Cal Store is. Where Cal is the yeah, restaurant. Yes. Yep. But when he first came to Boston, he used a push, uh, push cart in Boston with a knuckle of his. And one of his uh, biggest cousins was the Fitzgerald family, which were Jack Kennedy's grandparents. And um, when uh, uh, Jack Kennedy was running as a senator, uh, they had a big uh, reception at a hotel. Uh, it was not there anymore in, in Swampscott. Uh, my father insisted that I go and meet him, and um, he also told me to mention him that he sold fruits and vegetables to his grandparents, which I did. Me. And I can remember Jack Kennedy giving his undivided attention to every individual that went through that So you line. met him? I was very impressed, but I didn't have a camera at that time. Uh, which, which is a shock, everybody, because if anyone knows Connie Brown, <laughs> you always have a camera, and if we let people come into your house and see, your basement has made Kodak very wealthy because you have millions of photographs <laughs> in your house, which you love to do that. Yes, I love my hobby. In fact, yeah. I have to add, when I had my wedding and I paid a lot of money for my wedding photographer, everybody wanted to look at your album. <laughs> they weren't even interested <laughs> in the one I, the professional because you're so good at it. And I always did stamp collecting. Oh, you did? Yeah, and right now, uh, the main one that I mail all my stamps to is uh, Stuart Strong's youngest son. He used to live in Manchester, wow. so I keep in touch with them. One thing I want to say, you mentioned when you mentioning Jack Kennedy, I was wondering, did you vote for the first time when you were 18, you were able to vote? Yes. So that means you voted in 18 elections, because you... Uh, I think I've lived through 16, so, 16 presidents. So you've seen a lot. Yeah. And you're very, you're not political, but you're very strong about your what oh, you yes. believe about America. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I believe we, I should vote for the right person that I feel is good for the country. Right. And I have mixed my votes, too. Yeah. Because I, I want people that they're in office. So when you look at the way the world is today in the country, especially as we're in election year, what are your thoughts in, in terms of where I, this country's I, going? And I don't like what I see. Um, I, uh, politically, I feel our uh, candidates that are running, they should be telling us what they're going to do to help our country and help us to better ourselves. Um, I'm disappointed Congress, uh, uh, they don't listen to each other to compromise and uh, whatever. It, they each want to stay to their own political beliefs, which is sad. If they want to hear compromise, they need to come to your kitchen table with 10 brothers and sisters, right, and probably negotiate everything. Now, one thing we haven't even begun to touch on is my Aunt Connie is an amazing cook and uh, known for her Greek pastries. <laughs> and so I was lucky enough to catch up with you mm -hmm. and my cousin David Brown, one of the 25 cousins here uh -huh. in town, and um, you were teaching him how to make baklava. So we're gonna take a quick break mm -hmm. and we're gonna share with all those people out there, so get your pens and pencils ready to write down the recipe because you're gonna show us now, we're gonna go and take a break how to make Greek baklava. And it's really the best recipe out there. <laughs> so let's take a break. Μαζί σου για, μαζί σου για να παίξεις 
Welcome, and we are in Connie Brown's kitchen today, and um, I'm Dave Brown, this is my Aunt Connie, and the, the, the famous Aunt Connie, and, and she Wonderful mentioned she time. was making baklava, and I got right on that and said, I, I want some baklava lessons because um, Connie Brown's baklava are pretty, pretty exceptional. So, here we are, and... Uh, we're starting out with, what, what, what have we got here for ingredients, Aunt Connie? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I defrosted some filo dough, which I got in a local store. Normally, I use the large package and use a big tray, but because this oven will not take my big tray, I have to go to a smaller pan, so thus I get a smaller package of filo dough. There are two sleeves in here. I'll use the first sleeve, and I have to layer the nuts between the butter layers of this filo dough. I've already melted my butter. How much butter is in here? I, 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 I put um, three sleeves of butter, three quarter pound of butter. I keep extra just in case I don't, uh, if I put overlap too much butter on it. And I have to put seven layers first. After I put the seven layers, I put two layers of filo dough, butter them, another layer of those. Now in this syrup that I made, which was three and a half cups of water, three and a half cups of sugar, and uh, two sticks of cinnamon sticks. Once the syrup, and I timed it this time, it takes about 40, 45 minutes when it boils up in bubbles. I remove it from the stove. There's some it. honey in there too, right? Uh -huh. There's some honey in there too, right? Well, the honey goes after you've done the syrup. Oh, okay. And that goes in the last minute, stir the honey. Now, most recipes call for a lot of honey. I, I don't do that because I don't like it to be sicky sweet. And that's where everybody's happy. So I will remove this right now. Okay. So this is a 9 by 13 yes. pan? Yes. So yes. then I just unfold this quickly. All right. I've been a little afraid. I, I've been afraid of using phyllo because it dries out so fast. Yes. What do you do okay. about that? Okay. This is what I do. I just lay it down to, yes. and I immediately put... Um, Saran wrap, a Reynolds wrap on top of it because it can dry easily. Okay. But sometimes I move fast enough that I don't have to keep on covering it. And what I just do, I just place two wax papers on top. This so will start to a little process. So this isn't buttered or anything. I no? do do that. I do. I okay. do butter the pan. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And and, and every time I butter. I, I shake the uh, my little uh, brush because you don't want to uh, overlap and, 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 and you don't have to worry about if it breaks. See how this breaks? Yeah, you know, I, and, and I, I always feel when, when filo dough breaks like that, yeah. it reminds me like at the market they don't refrigerate it right away. It reminds me that it might have been slightly defrost it. Uh, if it doesn't even go in your pan smooth, 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 you don't have to worry about it because you're layering. Because the only the only layer they're going to see is the top no, layer anyways, yeah, right? It, 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 it's Which water. covers up yeah, all the sins, right? Yeah, shake your little spoon okay. and just brush quickly. Right? I've heard that that phyllo that has not been frozen is less likely to break. Right. You have to count. This is number two. So it's layer two. And then you just brush quickly. And and you can't be, you don't have to be fussy because it's gonna be baked and who could care less if a, I'm already uh, less afraid of this recipe, I have to say, just from this yeah, beginning. Three, this okay. is their third layer. Yeah, three, okay. Yeah. And this these fit, and right, even these if you, fit even, right into a nine by thirteen. And even if you drop an extra layer in, who knows the difference, right? Okay. You do. And which and what would you do? And these nuts, these are these are toasted walnuts no, or they're raw? just regular walnuts. Walnut yeah. halves. Have, have you? I, I get them. Did you grind them yourself, or did you get them? I ground? have a little um, food chopper. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's and it's about three or four cups. I put three and a half cups because I I never measure, but okay. I did purposely today because you have asked me. And those aren't sweetened or anything. They're no, just, plain? just regular, just regular walnuts. Okay. Are there some recipes that call for preparing the nuts in a, in a, in a kind of way well, with sugar a lot of, or Well, some people put other kinds of mix other walnuts, other nuts too. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And some put cinnamon sugar in their mixture, but my mother didn't. Okay. I do, I do what my mother did. All right. And, and I always say, once you have a, a good recipe, don't change it. All right. So you just your seventh layer, you put yeah. this on? 
And then, yeah, I just put a little extra on the bottom layer. Okay, beautiful. And then we go to the next one. I'm amazed at the number of people that like uh, baklava. Um, it was always one of my favorites. I tell you, I tell you, found, I tell you found that it gets layered with butter. The big, the big takeaway for me right now, the big takeaway is that this is not as difficult no. or scary as it always oh, seemed no. to. Those yeah. thin layers yeah. of oh, yeah. oh, oh, everybody thinks you, can, you just move fast, yeah, yeah. Just and it comes together very quickly. Yeah. And you are com you are coming up to your 90th birthday, yes? I'm my September 18th. Is oh my, my God! Yeah, I know. <laughs> And I told my family, no big party. I just want to have a nice get together with my family. Just family, right? Well, yeah, I'll be there. That, that'll make me happy. We'll be there. How many trays of buckwheat do you think you've made? Oh, I've never counted. In, <laughs> in your 90 years. I also have to tell you, you, you your, your cookies are also like little soldiers. They're perfection. Well, I, I think you've achieved. <laughs> I think, I think, you, I think every time I bake, I think of my mother because she always used to say, "You will perfect them, and they will be all the same size, like little soldiers." Okay, so this is Yaya's recipe, and she came from the middle of the. My, my, my mother was my mother was Stimitza, born in, right? Well, she was born in Kalamata. Yeah. And that was uh, a lovely city where the Kalamata olives come from. Okay. And when she was around seven years old, her father. Moved to this little village to me, it's in the southern part of Greece, Peloponnesus. So, yeah. And because they needed a shoemaker, he was a, he was a shoemaker. Her father. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so she, that's where she spent the rest of it. It's a lovely village. I've been there. It's I, beautiful. Yeah, I know you yeah. did. It's all done. Now we're going to start to uh, slice it before we bake it. You slice it before you bake it. Yeah. I go down. I slice down the middle. Using a serrated knife, yeah. And um, and depending on what size you want. So I'm going to just slice it and make nice decent pieces this time. So in order to get the diamonds, what I do is I turn the pan this way and, and just slice down on the edge, okay. On the edge, yeah. yeah. And then um, you kind of I I it how wide you want it. This way they get a little bigger piece. Um, the, the other thing that my mother did that a lot of people don't do is my mother always... So wait, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 32 baklava and so 9 my mother by 13 used to, pan. She used to put a little okay. toothpick very lightly on the top so that when you pour the syrup, the top phyllo won't go flying. But what I always do, sometimes the edges don't get uh, fully buttered. So I always take my little knife and dab the edges. We're all ready for the other. Looks like everything. All right, we'll pop it in the oven. Yeah, we'll put. All right, so it's almost ready. We've um, put in the oven for 10 minutes at 375, then another about 20, 25 minutes at, um, 350. at 350. And, and you kind of watch it uh, and have a nice light brown color. There we go. Now we're ready our timer. Let's go on. All right. Let me take it out. All right. Beautiful. Wow, it's perfect. Would you say that's pretty much perfect? Yeah, I think so. Good. All right. Now what you're doing now, uh, what Connie's told me earlier is it's very important this, it, to put um, you, your a cool a cool syrup onto a yes. hot baklava, or vice versa. Um, if your baklava has cooled down, you have to reheat your syrup. You cannot do a hot syrup onto a hot baklava; it will get mushy. Or a cold syrup onto a cold baklava because it just won't come together. So it's very important that they're at different temperatures when you do this part. And you're, I see you're just doing this around the edge. You go into the cracks. 
how long does this have to sit before I, I just it's ready? Go, I, just to make sure everything's really, that, you know, every um, part of it gets a little honey. And uh, I, th I think... Uh, had you prepared, uh, you had prepared the syrup last night? Yeah, I thought okay, I'd have it. night before? Really. Okay, so you can do the syrup ahead of well, time. Well, you can do it any time. Yeah. It takes a little while for it to cool. So what I do, and if you act, if you um, see that you have too much honey, uh, if you find that you have too much honey uh, made, that doesn't mean you have to put it all on. And many times uh, when I put it all on the edge, if it looks like it's uh, too heavy and hurry, sometimes I take my pot holder and just pour a little bit of it out. Because uh, right now it's, it's seeping through each layer. Wow, and I wait really until it goes. See, and that's it's, why we put the toothpicks in so that the phyllo dough won't rise. It is smells everything covered? delicious. Is everything covered? It looks delicious. Okay. So as we've seen here, it, uh, it's basic ingredients. It comes together pretty quickly. The phyllo dough is actually not that scary. It's the kind of thing though that once you start the process, you just have to be on it. We've, uh, it's come out of the oven now, we poured our honey syrup over it, yep. and you have to let it sit, Connie, you said, a good a good half an hour to an hour to really let the baklava absorb, absorb it. But, because I have to run off to New York, I've talked Connie into giving me a, a taste of this before it actually sits, it hasn't really sat long enough, but... So, you know, I'll remove the toothpick, and with my little knife, just cut down and make sure I that it's cut down now. Sir, we'll serve David his this is a treat. Alright. Alright, here we go. I can see the honey. <laughs> o M G. I'm <laughs> fine. The delicious the <laughs> master. She's a master. I you should be jealous. That's outrageous. Do you want some? No, thank no? you. Oh my god. Sick. Thank you so much. Enjoy. I love it. I'll, I'll make this. As they say, bon appetit. Mm. How do you say that in Greek? Can you all Good appetite. Yeah. All right, there's no question, nobody makes better baklava than you, and you know who's gonna vouch for me? Is your best friend, Libby, who's now joining us, and she's definitely sweeter than the baklava, right? You have been, you are unbelievable. You girls have been friends? Since. For a long time. Uh, we got out of high time. school, 17 years old, and so, right. yep. So you have been friends since you were 17, and Libby Ellis, who's known all around Cape Ann like you are, because you grew up in Gloucester. Yeah. And um, you're still here, and you, of course, the two of you met how? She was on the train. On the train going to Gloucester to Salem, uh, Salem, commercial. Salem commercial School in Salem. Uh, and that's how we met on the train, and we've been friends ever since. Yeah. And so you were going for school B for Bessie what? Bessie Casanas, Helen I Hodgson, would... Libby, and some other girl from Gloucester. Yeah. Yep. So you took the train, you were studying to do what? We went to Salem Commercial, two nights a week. Yeah, two nights a week, that's all. And then after you were doing schoolwork, then you went out and had fun? Yes. Oh, so yeah. so yeah. how'd you girls have fun? Well, sometimes they would skip school and yeah, go bowling. Bess Bessie Casada said I hooked school one night, went bowling, lot, missed the train, we, and her father got real upset. <laughs> so they, these girls really Yeah, are they called her uh, Bess uh, Bessie's father up. <laughs> and Helen, our friend Helen Hodges said, I'll do the talking. <laughs> and he recommended Helen because we were... Uh, they thought we were in a bar room. Yeah, because it was too <laughs> So now this is where the show gets really exciting because you girls are amazing. And uh, you're turning 90 in September and you're turning 89. Yeah, right? in December. So she, you have to listen to her because she's you're older, is that she, right? She's only a little girl. She's a year older, right? <laughs> I'm the older one. So you've been friends for 70 years. That's really special. And so yeah. how's that bond? You know, you could probably teach a lot of lessons to well, people the highlight out there. Of meeting Libby, and I don't know, and I'm sure she remembers it, she came up on the train to see me, got off the train, my brothers were playing football, and the football went over to front of her, she picked it up and punted it, across, <laughs> crossed it I to my brothers, athletic, and that's how yeah. they remember Libby, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't call her 
a great football player. You have to be. Because <laughs> she loves sports. Yeah, Paul yeah. says that story all yeah. the time. Yeah. You grew up on Cape Ann as well. Right. And uh, you also, your family's well known, the Ellis's, because before being part of the waterfront. Well, what did you do for work on the, you were working? I used to work in the office at North Atlantic Fish, in the, down in the fort. Okay. On commercial Street. So yeah. you've seen a lot of change, and then your son, of course. I just did a story with him, Thomas. Thomas. I mean, he's got the uh, the Glennon, the famous yeah. sailboat. That's right. And yeah. uh, that uh, goes out of Glo out of Gloucester. Right. And um, so you really are passionate about living on living on Cape Ann. The two of you haven't left. <laughs> right. That's no. true. No. How come uh, you, you? This has been a place for you. It's special. It, it works out great. Yeah. yeah. Now, and you, then when she got married, I was at her wedding party. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and I was one in, of my bridesmaids. Yeah, and, uh, seems like yesterday. So, oh my God! Yeah, no. So, what kinds of so you've done a lot of fun things over the years? Some trips? Some oh yes, uh, we do a lot of things together. And she yeah. used to come up quite often to our yeah, house. Yeah, well, she you know. worked in the store. I used to yeah. go, maybe help her a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you actually, you you actually worked in the store a little bit. Well, I yeah. didn't work in the store, but, but I used to help Connie. Yeah. <laughs> she was the one that did all the work. <laughs> That is too much. And one thing I know I heard you tell me, she taught you how to make baklava. Yeah. Are you still making that? Oh, yeah. I make it at Christmas time. Yeah. That's the only time I make it, Christmas well. time. Well, I know we're having, you know Aunt Connie's birthday's coming up. Um, what do you think is amazing about her as a person? Not just being one of your best friends, but just the, con the everyone knows Connie Brown. I think she's a wonderful person. We had a wonderful friendship. She's a wonderful, really wonderful good person. She's yeah. good to everybody. We've, we've never had an argument. Really? Oh, you've no, never had an argument? Never. 70 years of friendship. No. How oh, does that since, happen? Since we were 17. <laughs> that's good. Well, we don't see each other every day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we saw each other every day. Yeah, and she's got a happen. wonderful family. She's got a wonderful family. Uh -huh. Six boys and one girl. One girl, yeah, one so. daughter. I was lucky to have a daughter. <laughs> yeah. So what are, what are some of the fun things you want to do? Now you're turning 90, you're turning 89. What's What do you got coming up this year that you're going to... Uh, well, that main thing is going out to lunch. You're not going to go pole dancing or anything like no, that? No, no. <laughs> uh, we... we um, <laughs> We like to go out for lunches, and yeah. she loves cribbage, and I never did learn I cribbage. Do, yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to tell everyone, because I joined the Cribbage League here last year, and uh -huh. don't be fooled by her. She looks nice, and she's got a great laugh, but she's <laughs> she's good at that cribbage game. I love it. I mean, yeah. and maybe, I have played it for a long time. And maybe that's why you're still best friends, because you don't play. No. Things could be different, right, that's if right, you yes. play. But you do, share, you do share some really fun fun times together. Any yeah. funny stories you want to share about my Aunt Connie? I don't know. I don't think anything unusual has happened a long time. Uh, I did go on, on, on a boat ride on her son's Thomas. Uh, the Thomas, Thomas Lamb out, out of Gloucester? Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and you had a good was, time? Uh, yeah, I think you uh, shared and you do get a little seasick. Yeah. No, I, I, luckily I made out that good that day. Normally I do. Yeah. yeah. So but she goes out quite often. I go out quite often, especially on the music nights. I like to go. It's, it's you know, a really, like it's, it's very nice. And I yeah. think your friend plays. So how are you two ladies? I mean, just the energy that you have. I have friends, we're 50, that can't seem to get out of their own way. You are just still, you know, driving around and just living life just incredibly. Just keep busy, right? <laughs> We don't know how to relax. So you stay, you stay young. <laughs> we don't know how to relax. You keep moving. That's it. Yeah. That's the main thing. Is when you, you keep moving, you're all set. Yeah, we're both still <laughs> driving. Your feet on, yeah. When on I when I, in the morning, you're all set. I always hear my 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 dad will say, "Oh, when the good old days." I mean, do you oh, feel that yeah. way? That yeah. compared to today in the year 2012, you look back and think those were the good old days? Or absolutely, I still got down her house and <clears throat> and see her sisters and her mother and. We just had a lot of wonderful conversations and at her daughter's house, and she's got lo lovely grandchildren, and they're all growing up now and yeah, yeah. growing up too so fast. You had seven kids. I had seven, six boys and one girl. Right. And so, and so how many grandkids do you have? I have fourteen grandchildren and one great grandchild. Yeah. <laughs> so you're busy, and of course, yeah. you never got married, Aunt Connie, but you didn't need to. No, she's got. Because she had grand, 25 of us, and I have to tell you that any time we got wind that maybe you might have been. Dating somebody or something, yeah. we're like, please, no, she can't Don't let get, get married. married. We always just, that was so selfish. Oh, of us. that's not right. Isn't that awful? I can remember that. I, can remember really, that I was like, her and my aunt Jenny, her sister, they live, you know, live together. That was yeah. it. We just, they I couldn't. Love Jenny. Yeah, because we take care to take them on trips too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took her to Greece one year. I got to go to Greece with her, and that was yeah. amazing. You took five of us, five cousins at age 15, yeah. to the Bahamas. Right. Talk about daring. <laughs> Did you, how, you that didn't was, make any 
of those that trips. That was a daring move. But the yeah, two of you do get involved um, on some trips with the senior group? Well, yeah. uh, mostly with, yeah, yeah. with Masha Han. And yeah. those are fun? Yes, yeah, so and we take yeah. day trips with her. Foxwood yeah. and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Gambling a little bit. We've gone bit. to <laughs> Kennebec Port, Maine, and whatever. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. having a good time. And we saw nice plays, nice shows. And, nice, yeah. We and then we don't have to shows. worry about make, doing our travel plans, you know. Yeah. Somebody does it for you. Now, do you have any extra hobbies? I know my aunt between taking pictures all the time. She's always writing her letters. Oh, she's famous for her Toll House cookies, too. too. Her she's always making for everybody. And I knit. You're a knitter. <laughs> no, I'm a knitter. But you know what? I don't knit so much now. My hands aren't that good. I still make wool socks. All for my you do. That's she's fabulous. Knit. Love wool socks. Yeah, she's you know, knit many a sweater for people, too. <laughs> oh, I've made a load of sweaters. Yeah. yeah. So always, yeah. it's nice. Fisherman knit, you know? It's always good to have at least a couple different hobbies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've got to have something. You can't just, you know. And I love to read now. I do, too. I, my eyes, I have immaculate generation, so my eyes aren't the good Anymore, but, uh, so you still read? I got one of those Kindles, what? and they can enlarge the print, so I'm all set. So what are you yeah. reading right now? I'm reading um, one of Nora Roberts. I can't, I can't even think of the name of it right now. That's yeah. okay, but it's entertaining. <laughs> are, you, are you reading a book, Aunt Connie? Not right now, no, because I get so many magazines, reminisce, and um, the, the Time magazine, and my newspapers, and I doze off, fall asleep before I even finish a chapter. <laughs> now... As you both have gone through uh, eight decades, and you look back over the years, is there a period in the time that you just really think, wow? Oh, I, oh, I say that every day. Do you? Oh, yes. I, I can't believe that. You know what? I left when I was young. I, I enjoyed sports so much. Oh, very I much really, so. I was athletic, you know, so, and I really enjoyed when I was in high school. So, are you doing sport? Are you are you active? Do you, do you go walking and all that just to keep healthy and I, strong? You know, I try to walk the boulevard, yeah. So that, not in this heat, but you know when so it gets you're doing cool that. Now, next month. And I know you've had issues with walking, but you used to walk a lot. No, the only thing I'll walk to, walk to the post office, but I have to use my cane because of my arthritic knee. So what's the key of staying healthy and strong? I know one thing about Aunt Connie, we all knew never light up a cigarette, but <laughs> you were very. But in terms of just being healthy, you think you eat well and all that? Oh yeah, or? I'll never smoke. No, no, yeah, no alcohol. No. I think that's part of it. I take vitamins. <laughs> I don't take medicine, so, but I take vitamins. So we all like to say we have sort of a bucket list. I remember when you turned 80, and I was, we were getting ready for your big 80th, and you, I said, what's something you've never done before? And you said, oh, no. I've never been on Misery Island. That's right. So uh, here we are entering 90. Is there anything, though, that comes to mind that you're thinking about that you just no, love I to think do? I, I, no, I like have done I, it all? Yeah, I've gone to Europe, and I've done a lot of traveling, and I'm glad I did it when I did. Yes. Many yes, islands, European, yeah. How about for you, Libby? I know, I didn't do much travel. Yeah. But anything, anything although, she's, on, although she's going on a trip to Oregon. Oh, yeah, I'm going next, the end of the and, month. And, and so what, are you just going to see it, your family? No, my niece, is, she has a Labor Day weekend party. she got about 200 people coming. Isn't that now, amazing? We only have a few minutes left, so as we wrap this up, this special uh, celebration of your birthday and your upcoming year in December, but you're just your friendship. I think that's amazing. Well, absolutely. You, you know, we, you know, my mother always said you only need one or two good friends. You know, that that's really amazing what yeah, a friend will yeah. do for you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, my sister Jenny always considered her her best friend. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, my family, Jenny was a sweet my family guy. really adopted Libby. <laughs> what did you think about the Browns? I mean, they're quite oh, my, amazing. They're overwhelming, she said. <laughs> I think they're terrific. The Never Browns. dull moment. <laughs> when you saw that big Greek uh, wedding movie come out, right? Not quite not quite that, but um, it's certainly been nice for me to grow up with a family that really right. focuses on tradition and just yeah, having that yeah. network. It's really special. Exactly. Right? Exactly, so, and yeah. you, I don't know how many, you, how many sisters and brothers you had. Did you have? Were you? I, one I had one brother and four sisters. Yeah. So you grew up with a good sized family yeah. and had a good sized family and a wonderful. Family. It's all about family and that's really important yeah, that we keep absolutely. that. Absolutely, that's true. Yeah in my life. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I think we're going to have to wrap it up, and um, I hope everyone got their pencils out to write down your baklava recipe. But if they want to email you for it, can they do that? No. Yeah, if you want to. Um, <laughs> I, I will be replying to email because I haven't learned all the <laughs> no, So we won't, all, we won't have them all do of that. that. From I haven't mastered school, that computer yet. By hand. <laughs> yeah. I'm still handwriting. And it's back to school time, so you'll be back at Manchester Memorial School, right? And That's one of her favorite fall. things. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of yeah. fact, I had a lovely note from the teacher. Doing yeah. that. She's still she's still in school. She's yeah. still in elementary school. That's why you look so <laughs> See, young. See, this year I had little Theo Brown. 
So and that, that was wonderful, Rusty's little boy. So that was wonderful. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Libby, thank you for coming here and joining my Aunt Connie. Well, and thank you for inviting us. Yeah, this is really yeah. special. Elizabeth, I, yeah. It's not too often. You girls are amazing. And you're an inspiration. And I, li I like your co-producer, Donald yeah, Swanson. I get my husband behind the camera. <laughs> yes, so it's absolutely. all in the family. <laughs> All of the family. All the family, right. that's right, exactly. All right, well, if you don't see my Aunt Connie at Crosby's Market, which was once Brown's, <laughs> or at office. the post office, or getting her hair done downtown <laughs> or at school, well, you're always walking around town. You're a busy girl. Exactly. All right, well, enjoy the fall. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Love tea both. And yeah. that'll do it for this very special edition with these very special friends, Connie Brown and Libby Ellis. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody.